Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. It is the last weekend before New Braunfels students go back to school and it ended with a 16 year old boy drowning. Coming up, we're going to tell you what police are now saying about this incident. If we don't take care of the public art in our community, then it's all going to be locked up. It's going to be in museums and private residences and then none of that's a loss for all of us. More items from local parks being stolen and vandalized. We'll take a look at what San Antonio police are going to start doing differently to prevent these situations. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. It is under 80 degrees. Great start to the day. How hot is it going to be for the rest of the weekend? What about the first week of school for so many students in our area? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock. It is Sunday. Good August morning. August 20th. Thank you so much for starting your Sunday with us. So yesterday, did you make it out and about? I did. I was outside. She says with a, a frown. Well, I was just like miserable. It was so hot. And we were walking and we were in Southtown for dinner and we walked through a parking lot. I was just like, and there was a for bunch. For dinner? So what time are we talking here? Oh, my. Our version of dinner. Like 3 o'clock? 4 o'clock Oh, so ish. like prime heating hours yeah, kind of stuff? Yeah, and, and the asphalt was just so hot, and there's so many people outside waiting. I was like, how are people doing Oof. it? You know, how are we? How are, but hey, Sarah, small chance for rain in yeah, a couple Tuesday. of days? Okay. Tuesday is a day that some folks around South Central Texas will be getting some rain. Here in San Antonio, though, we're going to get a small chance of rain, but the heaviest of the rainfall is going to be south of the area. So we've got a lot to talk about in the forecast. But first, I want to get you through your day today because it's going to be another hot day and we definitely want to take those heat and fire precautions uh, carefully today. All right, outside right now in San Antonio, 80 degrees. New Braunfels at 78. It's 78 in Seguin. Bernie, you're at 72 this morning and 75 in Kerrville. Right now, the humidity is high, but it will be coming down this afternoon. That'll aid in the fire danger. We've got moderate fire danger through most of San Antonio, but in areas uh, north of 410 up toward uh, the hill country, that's where we've got some higher fire danger, more brush out there as well as near to Del Rio too. So looking at today's forecasts, here's what we're going to be seeing. Mostly sunny skies throughout most of the day. In the afternoon, a little bit of extra cloud cover. 103 for the high temperature and winds are actually going to be changing from the east today at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And the reason for the change in the winds is because a low pressure system will be approaching from the Gulf of Mexico. That low pressure system, it's going to be giving us a chance, at least a chance for some rain on Tuesday. Those details ahead in just a few minutes. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, we now know a 16 year old boy dead after drowning in the Comal in New Braunfels. Police called out to the tube chute around 3 p.m. yesterday after the teen who disappeared while swimming with his family above the chute dam. The boy's body found near the dam just before 5.30, pulled from the water, given CPR until EMS got there to take him to the hospital. That's where he was pronounced dead. The boy's name has not yet been released out of respect for his family. Police don't believe foul play was involved, but right now they're still investigating, trying to figure out what exactly led up to this drowning. A hearing over the floating barriers in the Rio Grande is set to take place on Tuesday in Austin. The Justice Department is asking federal court in Texas to block the construction of any new floating barriers. The DOJ also wants the state to remove the barriers in Eagle Pass. Governor Greg Abbott says the barriers are part of the state's efforts to curb migration from the southern border. But the Justice Department says Texas installed them without authorization. And we now know the name of the man who was hit and killed on I-35 on the access road earlier this week. So the medical examiner says 26-year-old Brandon Hudson was hit by a vehicle late Wednesday night on in the interstate's access road between Shepherd and Lucky near Lytle. Hudson was taken to a nearby hospital. That's where he was pronounced dead. Now the driver who hit him still on the loose. Investigators still working, trying to figure out who exactly is responsible. We told you about the 3D model of Confluence Park being stolen a little more than a week ago. And that's just the latest thing that's been stolen from our local parks. John Paul Barajas reports plaques and an interactive microphone have also been stolen in the last few months. A 3D model, an interactive microphone, and two bronze plaques all stolen in a matter of weeks. To the community, they were a great value. As far as the value of street value and cost of, of what you could get when you sell it for steel or something like that, extremely, extremely minimal. Uh, financially, it's a significant impact because, of course, we're going to manage that feature or that asset back to its original design. And Tommy Mitchell with the San Antonio River Authority says he's not sure if people are stealing for the sake of selling the items 
or just to cause damage. If we don't take care of the public art in our community, then it's all going to be locked up. It's going to be in museums and private residences, and then none of that's a loss for all of us. Freda Silixen serves as the executive director of the San Antonio River Foundation. He tells us the stream mic at San Pedro Creek Culture Park has also been vandalized multiple times. Now, after several repairs, it's missing. When people come up to the microphone and speak into the microphone, their sounds trigger lighting. The artist's goal is to grow engagement and perception of nature. The 3D model at Confluence Park is also art with a purpose. And they would see the path of the water and how the park directs water to certain areas so we can capture it and reuse it. Every field trip, they stop there. And you know, tens of thousands of students have come through here since 2018. As for the stolen plaques, they commemorate the Bear County Commissioner's Court for their funding to create a spot of park. Both Tillickson and Mitchell say the people responsible are not just stealing from parks, but San Antonio residents and visitors. I want you to appreciate your own backyard, your community. Uh, you know, I mean, think about the impact that you not only have uh, with stealing this piece or the damage that you may cause, but what is the impact to the community and the culture? And that was John Paul Barajas reporting. San Antonio police are aware of all three incidents. Meanwhile, both the San Antonio River Authority and Foundation say they are looking to replace the stolen items. They're also planning to add more security cameras to the parks. The Bear County Sheriff's Office held a career fair hoping to attract new recruits. The fair comes the same month as a historic pay raise for the department and a new program was launched. BCSO hopefuls got a leg up on their new careers with written and physical tests given. Sheriff Javier Salazar says there was a good turnout yesterday, but he's not surprised given the massive pay increase passed by county commissioners on August 1st. Now, incoming officers can earn a starting salary of 61500 rather than the previous $58,704. So if you start in the jail, your starting salary would be 45000 instead of just the shy 42000 The change is needed given the roughly 250 open positions currently at the county jail. Young people are just not flocking to law enforcement uh, agencies' doors, knocking them down, trying to start their career. So we've got to be imaginative, but that's what we're doing here. This was also the first career fair since the launching of the Straight to the Streets program, which would allow recruits who meet the age requirements to bypass time working in the county jail and start working in patrol as long as they pass their tests. All right, time now just about 6.08, 79 degrees. All the way up to Death Valley, where we could be talking three to six inches of rain or more. We are following Hurricane Hillary as it takes to California. Sarah Spivey will let us know what this could mean for Texas. And speaking of Texas, let's take a live look out of the Alamo City right now. All right, so you walked across the pavement. It was hot. Did you feel it basically coming up to you? I survived. You survived. You it, made it. It's just, it's, we're all doing it together. We're all together. We're all in this together. We'll be right back. Hurricane Hillary at one point, a dangerous Category 4 storm, has weakened to a Category 2 as it heads towards Southern California. So Governor Gavin Newsom issuing a state of emergency for much of that region. Millions across the southwest now bracing for the strong winds, heavy rains, and potentially life-threatening floods. As ABC's Lionel Moes reports, Hillary is on track to be the first tropical storm to hit the state in more than 25 years. Millions across the Southwest are bracing for Hillary. We want you to be safe with potentially dangerous weather conditions on the horizon, including high winds and flooding, power outages. Video from the International Space Station shows the powerful storm churning in the Pacific. Already impacting parts of Mexico, Hillary now headed towards Southern California, a tropical storm warning in effect for Los Angeles and San Diego. What we know for certain is that there will be sustained high winds of up to 50 miles per hour and that there will be enough rain to flood low-lying areas. We continue to ask people to shelter uh, in place during the storm. In Orange County, crews are busy building massive sand berms to protect beaches. Newport Beach is providing residents with sand bags. We're just preparing for the Hurricane Hillary that's coming into uh, Southern California. And in San Clemente, workers are laying down plastic tarps to help guard against mudslides. The San Bernardino County Sheriff's Office issuing evacuations for several areas, and officials are advising everyone to avoid travel. If you do not need to be on the roadways, we are asking you to postpone 
any of your non-essential travel until the peak of the storm passes. The southwest could see heavy rainfall through early next week. A high risk of flash flooding from Palm Springs all the way up to Death Valley, where we could be talking three to six inches of rain or more. Parts of California, Nevada and Arizona possibly getting more than a year's worth of rain in just 48 hours. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. All right, guys, yes, they are going to be dealing with, in some places, more rain than they see in a span of a year. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio, we're practically begging for rainfall, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, today, guys, we are going to be at our 22nd 100-degree day in a row. That is a record for the most 100-degree days, a triple-digit heat streak. 22 from July 30th to today and not to be outdone. I mean, from July 8th to the 22nd of this year, we also had 15 100 degree days in a row. So very impressively hot this summer for us around San Antonio. Here's a look at forecast highs in your neighborhood. It'll be 105 in Del Rio, 100 in Rock Springs, 108 in Catula, 103 in Beeville, 105 in Gonzales. A little bit closer to San Antonio, 101 Bernie, Holotus, Bulverde, 104 in Pleasanton, 105 in Floresville, 104 in Seguin, 102 Yavaldi, 103 Utopia, and 102 in Kerrville. So take advantage of the cooler temperatures right now before it gets too hot. 80 in San Antonio, 76 in Holotus, 77 in Bulverde. It's 76 in Divine Good Morning in Bandera, where it's 75 degrees, 77 in Bulverde. And looking at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, here's the, the quick warm up that we have in store today 86 around 10, 94 at noon. Noon. Mostly sunny skies for the first part of the afternoon, but in the latter half of the afternoon, we're actually going to see some clouds increase. It's still going to be hot, though. It's a subtle change. 103 in the afternoon for the high temperature. All right, let's talk about some good things, right? There is a chance for rain on Tuesday. Now, I have got to temper expectations because I know how much we want rain. There are going to be a lot of us that miss out on the rainfall on Tuesday because the heaviest of the rain will stay south of San Antonio. But but there will be some of us that get some rain on Tuesday, so about 40% chance and 40% coverage, all because of this tropical wave, which is north of Cuba now. It started to enter into the Gulf of Mexico. It has a 50% chance of developing into a tropical depression or tropical storm, basically a 50% chance of becoming more organized. Regardless of if it gets a name or not, it is going to be bringing South Texas some moisture. Here's a look at the future cast. By early tomorrow morning, that area of low pressure will be in the central Gulf. OK, so tomorrow is going to be pretty much more of the same triple digit heat for us. But by Tuesday morning, that moisture will be moving on to shore between about Corpus Christi and Brownsville. And as we head throughout the morning on Tuesday, it'll be messy for folks south of San Antonio. We're talking from Corpus Christi to Laredo, probably a lot of rain on early on Tuesday morning. But notice here in San Antonio, we are going to be on the north side of this system, so missing out on very, very heavy rain, but we could see one or two areas of brief downpours throughout the day on Tuesday. Notice that if you live in southern Atascosa County, if you live closer to Catula, Eagle Pass, much better rain chances. As we head into Tuesday afternoon, that low will be moving through South Texas, and again, we could see a, a brief downpour throughout the afternoon coming and going on Tuesday perhaps even up in the hill country where the drought is the worst. But this is not going to be widespread deep soaking rain for us in San Antonio. Different story potentially for Eagle Pass to Catula to Beeville, where there's expected to be a little bit more rain. But again, here in San Antonio, just a few passing downpours possible on Tuesday. Coverage will be about 40 percent and some people will miss out completely on the rain. Again, just trying to uh, lower expectations a little bit for the rainfall. The least rain across the hill country in San Antonio, more rain for Eagle Pass to Catula, and the most rain for areas between Laredo and Corpus Christi, where one to three inches of rain uh, will occur. Coming up, we'll talk a little bit more about Hurricane Hillary and the impacts to Southern California. We've had a lot of folks moving from California to South Central Texas in the last uh, Welcome. several years. So <laughs> those areas are going to get a lot of rain in South uh, California here in San Antonio, we may just be able to see temperatures below 100 degrees on Tuesday and Wednesday. That's about the best benefit we could get from that. Yeah. 
always tell all the Californians, sorry, welcome, it's hot. That's the way it is. <laughs> It's cheaper to live here. I was going to say, they moved here for a reason. <laughs> Let's just be clear. Yeah. Absolutely. So welcome. All right, time now, 618, 79 degrees. Okay, we are less than a week away from the KSAT Pigskin Classic. We'll let you know how to join in all the fun, as well as how you can help out San Antonio Food Bank at all four of our games. And today is the last day of summer vacation for so many students and families around the area. We're going to take a look at who's going back to the books tomorrow. Morning and welcome back. So today is the last day of summer vacation for so many students and families around the Alamo City. Let's take a look. So this is the list of the districts set to begin tomorrow. That's Comal ISD, Medina Valley ISD, New Braunfels, Somerset, Southwest. If you'd like to avoid school zones on your way to work, we have a full list of detours and alternate routes right now. Just head to KSAT.com. We are less than a week away from the 2023 KSAT Pigskin Classic. Tickets are on sale now on our website, sa.com. Just scan this QR code to see all of our ticket options. Remember, this is happening at the Alamo Dome. Very exciting time for these high school football teams and for the community. So our triple header is going to be on the 26th with the game also on Friday. The 25th will be there live that morning right here on GMSA. So join us on air this weekend and then head out to the Alamo Dome right after the shows to catch some awesome San Antonio high school football. And of course, while you're enjoying the fun at the Dome, you can also score a touchdown with the San Antonio Food Bank. Our KSAC community will be collecting donations at the Food Bank during all four games over the weekend. Remember, we have one Friday, triple header on Saturday. If you're not able to make it to the weekend, we have a QR code on the screen right now. It's kind of blended into the graphic. You can head to KSAT.com on our website. Full list of all the foods that San Antonio Food Bank say they need the most. Time now, 623, 78 degrees. Well, lots of changes coming to certain social media apps. We'll tell you what's going on with your favorite platforms, Max. Elon Musk announced this week that X, formerly known as Twitter, will be deleting the block function for accounts. It's actually funny because just moments ago, he just tweeted saying, or X, I don't even know what the verb would be at this point. Oh my God, that's right? weird. Right, regardless, whatever verb we're using, hmm. uh, he just said that blocking people, complaining about the blocking is a taste of your own medicine. So there you go. So. Musk on there saying that the block function makes no sense, saying there's no word yet of when it will change or if they will remove the blocking feature, if it will violate the terms of service. Sarah Spivey, your hand is up. I feel like blocking is actually very important, especially mm -hmm. for um, women. Yeah, because yep. I mean, listen, I'm sure Sarah can relate to this. We've gotten some interesting things on Twitter before and the safest thing to do is just block. Also for your Hold mental on, health. Let's see. Yeah. Can I block people? I can. You can. Still. Are you? Are you blocking me right now? I did officially just Max, block. Oh, wow. Successfully blocked. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm blocking you, Max. Snapchat's AI bot. You're unblocked. You're, thank you. I'll follow you again. Thank you. <laughs> Briefly appeared to have a mind of its own. Okay, this is kind of crazy. And users said it freaked them out. Don't blame them. The platform's my AI feature posted its own story a one second image that looked like a wall then stopped responding to messages. The company says it was just a glitch. All right, and background checks on Tinder taking a pause. Tech nonprofit Garbo, which performed the service for Match Group, ending the partnership with Tinder. Garbo's founder posted that the end came in part due to threats by bad actors on online platforms. I want to go back to this X slash Twitter thing. Okay. Uh, your last tweet was February 21st. <laughs> I haven't been on X. So, like, even if I were to block <laughs> I you, there know. would be zero changes. Okay, for the viewers, that's not my main social media oh, platform. Okay. My official case at one is on Instagram. Okay. I'm not taking a Zuckerberg a must sides, but I'm an Instagram girl. But you are taking Zuck's side. Okay. That's fair. All right, tab now, 628, 78 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy Sunday. It is 631. It is August 20th. So yesterday you said you went out to a great dinner. Yeah, we went to farm table. It was so yummy. Um, they do seasonal vegetables with the season and we are in full blown <laughs> summer season right now. So I'm grateful that they were able to make something so refreshing and it almost like cooling down, Sarah, 
Oh with, my gosh. Because yes. it was 100, and what did we get up to yesterday? We got up to 103 yesterday, and we're going to be close to 103 today as well. Officially at the airport, that was the high temperature. And officially at the airport right now, it's 80 degrees. Clear skies as we look out across downtown San Antonio. Southwest winds at about 5 miles per hour right now. And here's your forecast for the day. We're already going to be at 86 at 10, 94 at noon, 103 for the high. High fire danger once again today. We're kind of in that weather deja vu. Today, in fact, will be 22 100 degree days in a row for San Antonio. We've got east southeast winds today at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about a few things. There will be a weather pattern shift on Tuesday. Temperatures will likely stay below 100 degrees and there's going to be a chance for at least some rain on Tuesday in San Antonio. But before you get your hopes up, this is not going to be drought denting rain. The heaviest of the rain will be well south of San Antonio, closer to the Rio Grande Valley. So coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about this. We'll also talk about Hurricane Hillary, its impacts in Southern California and which parts of Texas will be seeing the most rain uh, from a weak tropical wave in the Gulf of Mexico. Details ahead. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, police searching for a suspect with a machete who allegedly hit a stranger with the weapon at a 7-Eleven. Take a look. This happened around 2 this morning. Police tell us a man with a machete walked up to someone he didn't even know at a 7-Eleven, this one near I-35 and Fair Avenue. The suspect demanding the man's possessions, and when he didn't have anything or didn't want to give anything, the suspect started swinging the weapon. He actually hit the victim in the head with the machete. That victim taken to the hospital, at last check stable. Still, police searching the area weren't able to find the suspect. If you have any information that can help police, you're asked to call 911 immediately. Two victims are waking up in the hospital after a West Side house party became the target of a drive by shooting. This happened at around 1130 last night near North General McMullen Drive. SAPD says a house party was going on when two men, a 17 year old and 18 year old, were shot inside the home from a drive by shooting. So one had a gunshot wound to the leg. The other was shot in the head and the arm. Police have very little information on the suspects at this time. We know a lot of people are going to be out and about today. Early morning church, picking up some last minute school supplies. So there are some major road closures on the north side we want to let you know about. So take a look at your screen. Text dot closing portions of Loop 1604. This is all part of the 1604 North Expansion Project. Both directions from the Northwest Military Highway exit ramps. Well, they're going to be closed. The intersection at Loop 1604 and Northwest Military Highway fully closed, including those turnarounds. Now, these closures in place from now until tomorrow morning, Monday morning at 5 a.m. We know people are still going to be out and about, so we have all that detour information, some alternative routes for you. Just head to KSAT.com. Well, after some Texas drivers are saying toll fees they've already paid for are now causing hundreds of dollars of late fees, toll authorities are working towards solving these issues. So during this year's regular legislative session, Lawmakers filed at least nine toll related bills, including proposals to cap fines and fees and make toll roads free to use once bonds are repaid. But the only one to become law was now users with electronic tags must be notified with an automatic payment when an automatic payment is rejected. So that law takes effect September 1st. The Texas Department of Transportation is saying they took no official position on the fail toll related bills discussed during the session. Well, just a day after Dan Patrick announced that he was appointing Mark Brown, who was a former justice on the 14th Court of Appeals from Harris County. He was appointing him for the upcoming impeachment trial of indicted Attorney General Ken Paxton. Well, Mark Brown declined the appointment. So the trial rules that Dan Patrick does have the option of selecting his own legal counsel. Patrick said he selected Mark Brown after months of searching, but Brown declined the appointment yesterday because he released that he had previously donated to Ken Paxton's opponent, Eva Guzman, back in 2021. Brown releasing an articulate statement that you can read on KSAD.com, in part saying, quote, this trial is far too important for Texas for there to be any distractions involving any allegations of favoritism or personal bias on my part, end quote. Two NASA astronauts made an out of this world visit to a Texas Children's Hospital in Houston. Astronaut Shell Lindgren and former astronaut and former director of the Johnson Space Center, Mike Coates, visited the center and also got a chance 
to meet the patients, Coates answered one boy's question about showering in space. And Lindgren responds after another boy asked, what goes through an astronaut's mind in space? Other curious questions the patients asked were, what astronauts eat and if they've ever seen an alien? Ooh, good question. If you want to hear their answers, just look for this article on ksat.com. Well, back here in San Antonio, a chef tells us his family lost everything in those Maui wildfires. Now he's leaning on our community for help. His restaurant, Best Quality Daughter, now serving up two specials to help support the family who is now homeless. Avery Everett sat down with the chef who said San Antonio has already stepped up. Some fried spam. Handmade. And then from there we just roll. With Hawaii in mind. I just kept getting my call dropped every time I called them, so panic mode set in. I didn't know what to do. Chef Christopher Buza at Best Quality Daughter was born and raised on the Hawaiian Islands. As the recent wildfires swept across Maui, Communication was lost with his family. They couldn't call in or out of Maui. Relief that they were okay. There's a Brittany damn house. And then heartbreak to hear their home was lost. And that's our cottage. The Booza family took this video earlier today showing what's left of their home. It, it hurts, uh, it hurts deep, you know. It, there's no place like being home. Best Quality Daughter is hoping a new fundraiser will help the Booza family push forward. Hopefully it can provide them even just a little tiny bit of relief. Your spam will be. Through the rest of August, all earnings from these two dinner specials will go directly to the Boozas. It's going to a family that we know and care for. Sweet soy, we go over the top. Spam Musubi and a new My Guy cocktail. Dishes designed by the team to honor and help the Booza family on Hawaii. Everybody was just behind me 100%. We have our furikake. Even an ocean away. Oh man, it's everything to me. Booza says his San Antonio community is stepping up to help. The moment we hit the ground running, we just, San Antonio came in and just started pouring their love for us. These two specials will run through the end of August. For other ways that you can help Best Quality Daughter and the Booza family, head on over to ksat.com. I'm Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. And today at the Pearl, you can help those affected by the Maui fires. 50% of every cup purchased at the Pearl's farmer's market will go directly towards supporting those impacted. The farmer's market is from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Well, San Antonio Zoo has big plans for expansion and upgrades. It's a multi-year plan. It's going to be tens of millions of dollars. And that is why Tim Morrow, president and CEO of the San Antonio Zoo, set to join us at 8 a.m. this morning for Leading SA. We're talking about the big plans, what families will notice, the expansion of the zoo school, and all the fundraising efforts. If you have any questions you want to ask, you can head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Submit those questions. Then join us for the full conversation at 8 a.m. I'm excited. I'm super. I mean, this expansion project is going to be amazing. I've been asking um, Kyle, mm -hmm. who's, Kyle our, see. who's our <laughs> who's our point of um, contact over contact there. over there about the gorilla yeah. exhibit. Well, don't don't steal the okay, well, Tim's a thunder little over bit here. Of a tease there. I'm going to be asking Tim about the gorilla exhibit. I'm excited. That's upcoming. Oh yeah, time now 6:40, 78 degrees. Well, still ahead on GMSA, 11 San Antonio eateries made it onto Yelp's top 100 places to eat in Texas. Okay, we'll see if any of your favorites made the list. And from the Houston, Texas to the Cowboys to UTSA and Incarnate Word, so much looking forward to in sports. We got football, Sarah, and it's exciting. You know, you gotta get excited about something in this heat. How the football teams are having two-a-days right now? Oh, my goodness. Oh, I don't know. Maybe, Hydrate. Maybe us Texans have a superpower living mm. through these triple digits. Sarah Spivey will have her forecast when we come back. Alrighty, everyone, welcome back. It is going to be a hot day today. Temperatures are already warming up. It's 78 right now, but by about... Uh, 10, it's going to be 86 degrees, mostly sunny skies, 90 already around 11, and then at noon, 94, 97 at 1, 100 by 2 p.m., and then in the afternoon, 103. It's going to be our 22nd 100-degree day in a row and our 55th 100-degree day for the year so far. And then later on tonight, temperatures will fall into the 90s after sunset. Take a look at highs in your neighborhoods, 102, Kerrville, 104 in Canyon Lake, 105, Carri Carissa Springs, 103. 
103. In Beeville, 106. Laredo, 105. In Del Rio, 104. In Eagle Pass. All right, that heat high has been nudged a little bit off to the east because of Hurricane Hillary. Currently a Category 1 hurricane. It was a Category 4 hurricane, but it's entered some cooler waters starting to weaken. It is not expected to be a hurricane by the time it impacts areas in Southern California. It'll be a tropical storm. Really the biggest impact from Hillary will be the rains. All right, localized 10 plus inches of rain across parts of the desert. In fact, some areas will see a year's worth of rain today in the matter of hours as Hurricane Hillary uh, falls apart and just becomes a huge slug of moisture moving through Southern California today. Meanwhile, our eyes are on the Gulf of Mexico. There is a tropical wave that has a 50% chance of development out in the Gulf of Mexico becoming perhaps a tropical depression or tropical storm. But regardless of development, it is going to bring some moisture to deep south Texas. Now I've got to let you know better rain chances from Corpus Christi down to Brownsville. Okay, that's where the heavy rain is going to be. In San Antonio, we're only going to see few passing downpours here and there. Some people will miss out on the rain entirely. Here's a look at the future cast. This is overnight Monday into Tuesday. That moisture will be moving onto shore. And then by Tuesday morning, heavy rain falling from Corpus Christi out toward Laredo with San Antonio really not seeing much early, early Tuesday morning. Then by the middle of the morning, closer to lunch. There is the possibility for a few passing downpours. Again, notice very sporadic around San Antonio. Heavier rains possible from Catula, even in southern Atascosa County. But then as that low starts to move off, we'll really only be dealing with isolated rain in the afternoon on Tuesday. Notice that some areas in the hill country could see an isolated shower or storm on Tuesday, but this is not going to help the exceptional drought out there across the hill country. But areas Areas like Eagle Pass could end up seeing a lot of rain. Same story on Tuesday in the evening, perhaps an isolated shower or storm as that low completely moves off and then we'll be done with the rain on Wednesday. So looking at rain chances again, 40% chance on Tuesday as far as coverage and chance of rain goes. The heaviest of the rain will stay south of San Antonio, closer to Corpus Christi, uh, Laredo and the Rio Grande Valley. That's where the heaviest of the rain will be. Uh, but the good news is we could stay below 100 degrees on Tuesday as we'll have a little bit more cloud cover, perhaps a passing shower or storm. Just want to lower people's expectations for the rain because rain is a precious commodity. We desperately need heavier rainfall. It doesn't look like this is going to be the one for San Antonio, but some parts of Texas will get rain, which is always good news for us. Then after that low moves out of here, we are back to the triple digit heat by next weekend. We'll be back with more news after the break. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Good morning and welcome back. Hey, how about those Texans? Texans and the Dolphins squaring off in week two of the NFL preseason. As expected, quarterback C.J. Stroud much sharper compared to his debut last week. So Stroud played the entire first half. He was 7-12, 60 yards. Helped the Texans get to this field goal in second drive. That ended up being the only scoring for Houston as Miami won the game 28-3. Things starting off strong for Houston. Though Denzel Perriman picking off Tua Tungvaluwa. First play of the game, but when it's all said and done, the Texans defense, they allowed 205 yards rushing and, of course, a loss. Yeah, with the run defense overall, it's not representative of who we need to be on defense, right? It, and it all starts with the fundamentals first. First, we have to set the edge. The ball got outside way too many times, and it comes down to tackling. The tackling was not good enough. I'm taking steps every, every week, so I'm really excited for the future, man. And um, I actually appreciate the mistakes and the lessons learned because you don't really get them anywhere else. Um, you got to learn and you got to have scars. So for me, I mean, I, I thank God for them, even though they might not look good on, on TV or look good to other people or uh, whatever the case may be. But um, at the end of the day, man, it's about uh, what God's plan is for my life and, and, and this team. All right, so you heard from right there, the second overall pick, C.J. Stroud, not officially announced as the Texans starter, but he started both preseason games, almost worked exclusively with the first teams of practice making it all in all more likely he will replace Davis Mills this season. All right, to our other Texas team, the Cowboys on the West Coast comes to an end. Following their game last night, Dallas taking on Seattle. Week two of the preseason, no Cowboys starters in the mix. Geno Smith, though, for Seattle looks sharp, two drives. Drew Locke led Seattle to a pair of second-quarter touchdowns, but at the end of the day, 
the Cowboys lost 22 to 14. We're going to have so much more on this game. Hear from some of the Cowboys players tonight on Instant Replay. Here we go, UTSA retiring its fall football camp, allowing the focus to fully shift onto its week one matchup. First game in the AAC, taking on Houston. It's not just any game though. It's a rematch and a chance for the Roadrunners to avenge last season's opening triple overtime loss at the Alamo Dome. This is a big year for UTSA. Their national prominence on the rise, on the line, and curiosity near the program, an all time high. There's just excitement behind just going and be able to play somebody other than ourselves for, you know, the first time in a long time. Um, you know, I mean, just being able to, like I say, get back to the season and get back in the swing of things and, um, you know, being able to play somebody other than ourselves, is just, there's just excitement behind that. Um, you know, I mean, like you said, we played them last year down here and it wasn't the outcome that we wanted, but um, it's a new season now, you know what I mean? So we're just going to keep on preparing and do what we do and uh, go up there and play our brand of football. Last year was craziness. All right, here's good news. There's only 13 days until UTSA football begins. All right, let's talk last year's FCS semifinalist, Incarnate Word. All right, first year head coach, Clint Killall. He expressed his confidence in the team. I mean, why not? They had so much depth, so much talent, so much excitement. They had their media day this weekend. UIW enters the 2023 college football season with Texas A&M transfer Zach Calzada at quarterback and returning receivers. We got Brandon Porter. We got CJ Hardy. We got Jalen Campbell, just to name a few. Wide receiver play has never been an issue at UIW, you know, and that's that's just who we are. That's the identity that we've created. Um, and, and it's easy, you know, from the outside looking in to see you lose two All-Americans and it's like, okay, what's next? But, you know, you talk about a guy like Jalen Campbell and in my opinion, um, last year could have went anywhere in the conference and started. So speaking of this, it'll be Cardinals first season with the new head coach at the helm, youngest head coach in the division one, UIW's first home game, September 23rd. So we got football. We have high heats. We have 100 degree day after 100 degree day, but we got football. Okay. Yeah. Hope everyone's safe out there. Stay hydrated. Absolutely. Time now, 655, 78 degrees. We'll be right back. All right, just a reminder, fire danger is high today. Got to remind you because, again, we have seen some grass fires locally. So please use caution, especially up in the hill country and out west toward Del Rio. That's where fire danger is highest. Looking at today's forecast, 86 to 10, 94 at noon, 103 for the high today. Winds are going to be turning to the east at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then all eyes are on Tuesday. Now, Tuesday will only have passing downpours here in San Antonio, but the heaviest of the rain will stay south closer to the Rio Grande Valley. But what I'm really excited about is look at those highs 97 on Tuesday and Wednesday we're at 99 I didn't think we would be so excited about temperatures being below <laughs> 100 but here we are I'm all excited about the possibility of rain yeah a few of us will get some rain which is good news I'm definitely not going to be the few <laughs> <laughs> you know with your luck probably not <laughs> yeah that's fair all right I do want to you know try my luck at some of these restaurants 11 San Antonio restaurants making it on Yelp's top 100 places to eat in Texas last year for 2023. Okay, so here we go. Curry Boys Barbecue made it to number four. Nice. Wow, never tried that. And Gino's Deli Stop and Buy is number 20. And over on the Northwest on Northwest Military, Billy's Eatery and Coffee number 32. Amazing. Yeah. Like amazing sandwiches. It I want to go back to there. Gino's because they have the cheesesteak that David Elder says so is good. one of the best I've in the it. city. Yeah. Wow. I went to high school. Clark and Juno's would be on the way. I'd go. Nice. Breakfast of champions. For sure. And then Curry Boys, let me tell you, love Curry Boys. Hello. I mean, at number four, it's so got to be good. All right. We got Benji's Munch at 52. Have you been? No. no. No, me no. neither. All right. Uh, Hash Vegan Eatery. I feel like Sarah Costa is right up your alley. Oh, it's okay. Okay. Yeah, I've been there. They had, they had some good pancakes. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And B PB and J with Tay is 57. Magpie, 63. Magpie, oh my gosh, their bread was the best bread ever. I have a great with this list. And of course. Adoria is only 64. We got to bump that up. Yeah. And Chef's Table, number 95. See you back here at 8 a.m. See you guys at 8. Made it. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Two people shot in, at an overnight house party, leaving both in the hospital this morning. What San Antonio police are saying about that party? And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, it's less than 80 degrees now. How hot is it going to get? 
Could we see rain in the next week? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. For now, good morning. It's 8 o'clock. It is Sunday, August 20th. Thank good you so morning. much for starting your morning with us. Okay, so yesterday we talked about out and about during the peak heating hours of the day. What is that, like till 5 o'clock? So you did exactly More like 6.30 Oh, geez. You seven. did exactly what not to do. I did, but I wasn't like out and about. I was crossing a parking lot. That's fair. But, but it you was, still felt the heat. It was still too much. I mean, Sarah, we got it to wait 103 yesterday. Yeah, 103 was the high yesterday. We're going to do it again today. I just got to remind everybody that fire danger remains high today. We had a grass fire in Medina County. It's 50% contained uh, 325 acres. So you may smell a little smoke in the air. Uh, that grass fire, though, is contained, which is good news. As far as air quality goes, it's fine right now. Just a little bit of smoke in the air for some folks. As you take a look out uh, across fire danger for areas in the hill country, you can see that it will be very high fire danger out in the hill country, very high fire danger out west toward Del Rio. And looking at today's forecast, by 10, we're going to be at 86 degrees. By noon, 94, 103 for the high temperature today. East winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Coming up in the forecast, we are going to be talking about this tropical wave. It has about a 50% chance of developing developing into a more organized system throughout the next couple of days. But this is going to be bringing parts of Texas some rainfall. How will San Antonio fare as far as the rainfall chances go? I'll have those details coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Two victims in the hospital this morning after a West Side house party ended up a target of a drive by shooting. Take a look. This was a scene around 1130 last night. The home located near North General McMullen Drive. Now, police on the scene telling us there was a house party going on when two men, a 17 year old and 18 year old, were shot inside the home from a drive by shooting. One shot in the leg, the other shot in the head and the arm. Investigators tell us they have very little information on the suspects at this time, but police still working, trying to figure out what exactly happened, who pulled the trigger, and why. A street fight ended with one man being cut on the, in the ear. San Antonio police say this happened around 2 this morning south of downtown. Two men got into a fight that led to a knife being pulled out. The victim was treated on the scene and is expected to be okay. Police were able to take that suspect into custody. And a 16-year-old boy is dead after he drowned on the in the Kamal River in New Braunfels. Police call, were called to the tube chute around 3 p.m. after the teen disappeared while swimming with his family above the chute dam. The boy's body was found near the dam just before 5.30 and was pulled from the water. He was given CPR until EMS got there to take him to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The boy's name has not been released out of respect to his family. Police don't believe foul play was involved and are investigating what led up to this drowning. Well, the San Antonio Zoo has big plans for expansion and big plans for upgrades. It is a multi-year plan that's going to cost tens and tens of millions of dollars. Joining us in today's leading essay segment is Tim Morrow, president and CEO of San Antonio Zoo. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for joining good, us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So, Tim, the zoo expansion, it's extensive. So for the families watching, what can they expect and really what is your guys' goal? Yeah, we have a lot of uh, construction going right now, a lot of improvements happening. The main project we have is an all new entrance that uh, is going to greet guests uh, here later this year at the end of November, beginning of December. Um, and then throughout the zoo over the last few years, we've invested almost $80 million back into the zoo and really upgrading it and, and getting ready for these massive projects we have coming like this front gate. And then early in 2025, we're going to bring back gorillas, which we haven't had since 1991. Um, and a great, beautiful event center that really helped the zoo and host a lot of events for the community. Okay, Tim, I already told Kyle <laughs> over at the zoo that I want to be the official gorilla correspondent when this all goes down. Okay, so you said 2025, is that going to be the opening of that gorilla exhibit or is that going to be breaking ground? And also, this is supposed to be the biggest gorilla exhibit in the country? Yeah, this will, will break ground probably in December of this year or January of next year of 2024. <laughs> well, my ears are blending these days. Uh, and then we're hopeful to open in the first half of 2025 with gorillas. So really excited. And people will start to see construction uh, in that corner of the zoo in the next couple of months. And uh, just really excited about bringing uh, those gorillas back to San Antonio. The habitat is big, one of the biggest, if not biggest in the country, uh, of two acres of gorilla space. And so 
a really immersive exhibit for our visitors that will see that and very enriching and welfare focused habitat for the gorillas that we'll bring in from other zoos. Tim, for our viewers sake, that gorilla habitat, you said two acres, the location for that, <laughs> Max is laughing. This not, is, I, I am. <laughs> Sarah's been talking about the gorillas throughout the entire I'm so morning. Excited. <laughs> okay, but the location of it, it's going to be the back of it. Will it be, will it back into the Hildebrand part of, I'm just thinking of yeah. like location. Is that where it will be? Sure. Yeah, so it's near, if you're familiar with the zoo, it's, it's almost between hippo, I mean, I'm sorry, rhinos and lions, that kind of upper corner area of the zoo at Hildebrand in 281. And so um, it's an area of the zoo that had been kind of empty for the last few years. It was called the treetop before. Um, and so we renovated Rhino recently. We renovated Lion and it's kind of that big space in between. Um, and if people remember coming to the zoo when we had cheetahs, that the, the cheetah habitat will become part of gorillas and a few other habitats will be turned into this amazing gorilla space. Awesome. Now, Tim, I know a lot of families watching. They're super intrigued with the zoo school. Will there also be an expansion of the school? More kids can attend? Yeah, uh, we have a great problem and challenge at a Will Smith Zoo School. We have around 240 children that go to that nature-based preschool, and the waiting list is now over 8,000. And so the zoo is actively working with a committee of philanthropists and business leaders and other people to kind of just think through how we can scale that school. We know there's a big demand for parents want their children in nature-based preschools and nature schools like this. And so we're working on how we can expand the reach of that Will Smith nature-based uh, nature preschool. And obviously, this is a multi-year plan. We talked about it costing tens and tens of millions of dollars. Have you guys put a final price on it? How much is it going to cost? And where are you getting the funds from? Sure. The overall master plan is probably around 200 to $250 million, and that's going to be over the next 10 to 15 years. Um, Gorillas is just the big start of what we're doing with this entrance and event center. And so uh, really excited about the long-term plan of the zoo. And the sources we are using, uh, utilizing to help us fund this are, one, philanthropy. So corporations, um, individuals, foundations uh, contributing to the zoo. We are a 501c3 nonprofit, so we need donations to, to build and to expand and get better. Um, the city has been amazing with us, with assisting us with funding through the bond and other sources. Um, and then things like new market tax credits, historic tax credits. Um, we're hoping the county will want to participate at some level at some point. And so uh, just really anybody that wants to help, we are accepting that and working really hard uh, to raise those funds to uh, make San Antonio Zoo the best zoo on the planet. Okay, and we know the Spurs are making a play to attract more fans from Austin. So how is a zoo working to bring in visitors from the capital city and across the state? Yeah, well, we're really excited about the growth in Austin. And as everyone that lives in either one of those cities knows, they're really growing together. Um, and so we are the major zoo of South Texas, um, for, you know, from Del Rio to Corpus, um, over halfway to Houston and up past Austin. And so uh, we do know people from Austin visit our zoo and we do know people from Austin visit San Antonio. So just like the Spurs, uh, we really want to tap into that audience and be welcoming to them and get them to San Antonio and hopefully stay a couple of nights in hotels, eat at all the restaurants and enjoy all these amazing attractions that we have in San Antonio. All right, Tim Morrow, President and CEO of the San Antonio Zoo. Thank you so much for your time this morning. We thank really you appreciate it. Thank Try you, to stay Tim. cool out there, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, hopefully that 100 degree will break one of these days and we'll be a little bit cooler also. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Perfect tease because we're going to be hearing from Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Time now, just about 809, 78 degrees. Still ahead, a look at things to do in the San Antonio area, some events coming up and some already happening now. Okay, look after the break. We're going to introduce you to a national Scrabble championship winner. I actually got to meet up with this winner and she says what it takes to be a Scrabble champ. Also, what was her winning word that mm. helped her win that? Did you play her? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, no. These, the, the people that meet and play with these Scrabble champs, they're good, real good. You know who's also real good at Scrabble? Sarah Spivey. We're gonna check in with her in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. You know what, I'm just gonna keep the water bottle on the desk. We're hydrating here. It's Let's hot go. outside. <laughs> All right. Good news. After a Burbank High School librarian recently won her division at the National Scrabble Championship in Vegas. Look at that. It was very cool. So I spoke with that Scrabble champ about her love for textiles and what it takes to never be at a loss for words. My mom liked Scrabble and my aunt. They were both, you know, wordsmiths. They loved it. And that kind of just got me interested. From just interested to a Scrabble champ, 
Jennifer D. Walshy, the librarian at Burbank High School, won first place in Division Four at the Scrabble Players Championship in Las Vegas this summer. It was her husband that got her into playing competitively. It's actually how they met. We played our first game on our second date, and I beat him. It was words at first sight. But um, he knew that I was a player, so I got his attention. Jennifer says her competitive career started out like a bag of jumbled letters. Her first tournament in 2012 was a H.O.T. mess. I lost every game, and I wasn't sure if I was cut out for that because I was pretty competitive and I didn't like losing that much. But by my third tournament, I actually came in second and won like $25 at that tournament. She says she began teaching Scrabble at her then middle school as an after school club. 29. That helped her become the queen of the Scrabble dictionary. And the highest scoring word that Jennifer's ever played inquired for 203 points played as a triple triple. But what about the word that helped her win at nationals? Stalker, S T O C K E R. At the championship, Jennifer went on a winning streak, winning 14 games in a row, and says that word helped her come back in a match that she thought she would for sure lose. I and mean, I was losing by over 100 points in the middle of the game, and I was almost giving up. But I drew the blank, which was very helpful. I got a bingo down, and then um, had the blank, drew the E that I needed, and I was able to put the word stalker down. Which helped her stock up on the points and win her division. Her advice to those who want to play like her, read a lot, study your Scrabble cheat sheet and player's dictionary, and have board vision. And knowing you know, when to open up the board or shut it down or finding those great plays, it's strategy. You know, It's the art of competition and learning how to be a gracious winner and a gracious loser. You know, So there's just so many things that you get out of Scrabble. You know what's really cool about this is that um, a competitive Scrabble club, they meet every Thursday at 6 p.m. at the Lions Field Adult Center right off Broadway. Mm -hmm. And they actually said anyone can come. Nice. Anyone can come if you're interested in learning. Uh, Sarah Spivey was asking me, they have timers. Yeah, because it's competitive Scrabble. Mm. They have 25 minutes, like for the- Total. Whole, yeah, so it's, it's like, you know how chess times yeah. and you, you know, oh, I'm gonna take extra time on this word or I'm gonna make this real quick. I mean, they play by the rules that they do at the national level. So I learned a lot. I am not a game board girl. Did you play it all? No, I'm not a game board girl. I don't have board vision as she <laughs> called it. Sarah Spivey, you're a game board girl. I love Scrabble. I love playing Scrabble. I beat my husband finally for the first time. So I've got to throw that in there. All right. Hey, sorry, Michael. Sorry, Michael. About that. <laughs> um, so it is hot. I can only say it's hot so many times. So this weekend we have been highlighting some of the students at Sunshine Cottage School for Deaf Children. Oh. And today we've got a look. Here you go. It's so hot outside. We should drink some water and be in the shade. That is great advice, Joseph. Thank you so much. Make sure to drink some water and stay in the shade. Today we'll make 22 consecutive 100 degree days since July 30th. This will be our longest streak on record. Records date back to the 1880s. But just earlier, July 8th through 22nd, we had 15 100 degree days. It's going to be 103 in San Antonio today, 105 in Del Rio, 100 in Rock Springs, 108 in Catula, 104 in Canyon Lake, and 102 in Kerrville, 101 Holotus, Bernie, and Bulverde, 103 Poteet, 105 in Floresville, and Nixon Smiley, 104 in Seguin, and 105 in New Braunfels. So enjoy temperatures while they're temporarily in the 70s. 79 in San Antonio, 74 in Holotus, 79 in Hondo, 70 in Comfort, and 72 in Kerrville. Looking at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, quickly warming up from the 70s to 90 degrees by 11, 94 at noon, 100 at 2 p.m., and 103 for the high temperature today. Again, our 22nd 100 degree day in a row, our 55th 100 degree day for the year so far. But it's not all bad news in the forecast. There is a chance for some rain on Tuesday here in San Antonio, although I do have to 
Make sure to manage our expectations. The heaviest, most beneficial part of the rainfall will be well south of San Antonio. Some folks will miss out on rain entirely on Tuesday, but the source of the rain is this tropical wave over Cuba, which has about a 50% chance of developing into a more organized tropical depression or tropical storm. But regardless of development, it is going to be bringing us moisture. So let me take you through the future cast. This is a look at early tomorrow morning. By that point, the tropical wave will be in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. It'll be moving onshore with its moisture between Corpus Christi and Brownsville early Tuesday morning. We're talking about the pre-dawn hours of Tuesday morning. Then some decent rainfall will fall from areas in Laredo out toward Corpus Christi. Notice that in San Antonio, again, we're well north of this system. So all we can expect to get is perhaps a few uh, passing downpours here and there starting mid morning on Tuesday with heavier rain again falling well south, perhaps in southern Atascosa County, Frio County out toward Catula and Eagle Pass. But again, in San Antonio, it'll be few and far between uh, passing uh, showers and storms into the afternoon as well as that low moves off to the west. So areas like Eagle Pass again could see some decent rain from that. But here in San Antonio, this is pretty much all we'll get a few passing downpours here and there and again because of the nature of this there will be those that miss out on the rainfall completely and there will be those that see a passing downpour so when we look at rainfall unfortunately san antonio one of the areas that will see the least amount of rain same story with the hill country where we desperately need rainfall but the least amount of rain is possible from this system more as you go south toward pearsall catula creso springs and eagle pass with the most rain falling between laredo and corpus christi one to three inches of rainfall. That's not the only tropical uh, thing that's going on. Coming up, we are going to talk about Hurricane Hillary, which will be bringing a lot of rainfall, flooding rains to parts of California. As for our weather, we will have the potential to drop below 100 on Tuesday because of the extra cloud cover and the passing rain. Well, we may stay below 100 on Wednesday as well, but we'll be back to the triple digits by the weekend. Hmm. I know. It's sad that we're excited about like 97. I know. And that just shows you how hot it's been, you know. And 97 is about 10 degrees cooler than the weather we've been dealing with. Okay. That's crazy to think about. Yeah. A great way to beat the triple digit heat this next coming weekend. Mm. Case at Pigskin Classic. Oh, look at Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Inside, Inside the, the Alamo Dome, which is actually pretty cold. I might actually have to bring a sweater. So Friday and Saturday, right? No comments. <laughs> All right, 821, 80 degrees. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, five, eight, six, fireball two, daily four, three, one, four, zero, fireball nine. Uh, so History Texas just tweeted out Elvis at the Alamo Dome from like several years ago. Obviously, I retweeted it, so check it Wait, out. Wait, what? Or X, whatever we're calling Twitter oh, now. Oh, X yeah. was X'd out? Okay. Is that what we're saying? I don't know. Let's take a look at these numbers. You still play Cash 5? I haven't, I haven't recently. I okay. played um, Powerball, I didn't win. Okay, here are your cash five numbers. 13, 18, 28, 29, 30. You know how I know you didn't win? Because I'm here. Because you're here. Mm -hmm. Lotto, Texas, <laughs> 8, 16, 26, 27, 41, 43. Here you go. If you did play the Powerball, 1, 25, 27, 38, 62. Powerball 13, power play two. Good luck, we'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. So there's so much to do in and around San Antonio. A new Tim Burton exhibition called Dreamland opening up the McNay, celebrating the 30th anniversary of The Nightmare Before Christmas. All right, Nightmare Before Christmas. Halloween movie, Christmas movie? Halloween movie. Okay. Thousand percent. Solid an answer. All right, it gives visitors <laughs> a glimpse into the world of Burton now until January 14th. Original models of the beloved Burton characters like Oogie Boogie. Exposed. Oogie Boogie Man. Oh, beautiful. No? You know? Great rendition. Uh, Bone Crusher and Jack Skellington. They're going to be spotlight at this exhibition. Okay, Chick fil A adding a new sandwich Ooh, to like its menu options. Max introducing the honey pepper pimento chicken sandwich. Cannot be bad. I love pimento tea. Oh, me too. All right, so the popular fast food chain says the new sandwich features an original Chick fil A. Topped with creamy pimento cheese. And, oh, this is where it gets me. The pickled jalapenos. You are such... I don't know. How are you even going to describe this? Let's go. <laughs> no. All where right. are you going to go? Well, let's, go. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. 
skip that. Served on a warm toasted bun drizzled with sweet honey. Okay. They said during testing, customers rated it so high on taste and value, putting it on par with the original Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. Wow. The honey pepper pimento chicken sandwich rolls out at Chick-fil-A's nationwide beginning Monday, August 28th. My stomach is growling. You loved anything pickled. Anything pickled. Uh, so if you ever want to be like the star of like a party, bring in food and whatnot. Bring the, in pickled onions. No, I was going to say the, the Chick-fil-A really went the other way with that one. The Chick-fil-A <laughs> like pickled. chicken nuggets, everyone loves them. They're always the first thing gone. Yeah. yeah. With all the, wait, what, what's all your the go, sauces. What's your go-to dip? Honey mustard. Yeah. I knew we were friends. Yeah. Look at well, that. I do honey mustard mm. for the nuggets. Okay. But for the fries, what do you do? See, it's different. I do love the waffle fries. Waffle fries with, with what dip? I use all the dips. Because okay. you have more than one fry. You get to diversify. Okay. Chick-fil-A. Sarah solid. likes Chick-fil-A. I'm, I'm Our a producer is like, this is this is not ranch chopped. for the chicken waffle, or for okay. the chicken waffle, for the waffle fries. Okay. Honey mustard for the nuggets. You gotta put this algorithm on Twitter or X. <laughs> all right, time now, 827, 80 degrees. Okay. A state of emergency in Washington state as three wildfires are burning still ahead what officials and firefighters are doing to get them under control. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It is Sunday, August 20th. Got it. Got it. Nailed it. Oh my gosh. I just feel like August is on repeat. It, it, well, every actually, day has Sarah, seemingly felt. The last 22 days on repeat. Is, did I get that Guys, number right? The last 22 days, including today. So today makes 22 days where we have seen a high temperature of 100 or greater. So yeah, it makes sense that, you know, every day kind of seems the same. And today, weather wise, is going to be very similar to yesterday. We're starting off with sunshine, 79 degrees. Take a look at the forecast for the day today 86 at 10. Noon will be 90. 94, 103, and then once again today, there is high fire danger. So keep that in mind. Yesterday, the fire started out in uh, rural Medina County. At the latest, it's 50% contained. So just be very careful today. Do not park your car on grass. Do not, uh, I mean, make sure to fully extinguish and expose of cigarettes properly. Fire danger continues to be high today. Here's a look at some weather headlines we're going to talk about in the forecast. There will be a weather pattern shift. We'll be done with the weather deja vu for a day. Tuesday, we will have a chance for at least some rain in San Antonio. But before you get too excited, any of the heavy beneficial rain will be well south of San Antonio. But there's still a lot to talk about. I'll show you the details take a look at the Gulf and we'll check in with Hurricane Hillary, which is going to be bringing a lot of rain to Southern California. Details ahead, Sarah. Sarah, thank you. Police are searching for a man with a machete who hit a stranger at a 7-Eleven. So this happened about two this morning. SAPD says a man with the machete walked up to another man that he didn't know at the 7-Eleven. This happening near I-37 and Fair Avenue. The man demanded his possessions. When he didn't give him anything, police say the suspect started swinging with that machete, striking the victim in the head. He was taken to the hospital in stable condition. Police searched the area and were unable to locate that suspect. One 18-year-old accused of sexually assaulting and killing an 11-year-old girl in Pasadena, the suspect now in custody. According to Pasadena police, 11-year-old Maria Gonzalez was home alone. So when she heard a knock at the door, she texted her dad, letting him know he responded not to open it. After she didn't answer his calls, he asked the family to check on her. Uh, they found the door unlocked, items displaced around the apartment. Her father returned home to find her underneath the bed wrapped in a trash bag. Police say the suspect is going to be charged with capital murder. Well, here in San Antonio, a chef tells us his family lost everything in those devastating wildfires in Maui, and now he's leaning on his community for help. So the restaurant, Best Quality Daughter, now serving up two specials to help support the family who is seemingly homeless. A, uh, Avery Everett sitting down with the chef who said San Antonio is already stepping up. Some fried spam. Handmade. And then from there we just roll. With Hawaii in mind. I just kept getting my call dropped every time I called them, so panic mode set in. I didn't know what to do. Chef Christopher Busa at Best Quality Daughter was born and raised on the Hawaiian Islands. As the recent wildfires swept across Maui, communication was lost with his family. They couldn't call in or out of Maui. Relief that they were okay. There's a Brittany damn house. And then heartbreak 
to hear their home was lost. And that's our cottage. The Buza family took this video earlier today showing what's left of their home. It, it hurts, uh, it hurts deep, you know. It, there's no place like being home. Best Quality Daughter is hoping a new fundraiser will help the Buza family push forward. Hopefully it can provide them even just a little tiny bit of relief. Your spam will be. Through the rest of August, all earnings from these two dinner specials will go directly to the Boozas. It's going to a family that we know and care for. Sweet soy, we go over the top. Spam Musubi and a new My Guy cocktail. Dishes designed by the team to honor and help the Booza family on Hawaii. Everybody was just behind me 100%. They have our furikake. Even an ocean away. Oh man, it's everything to me. Booza says his San Antonio community is stepping up to help. The moment we hit the ground running, we just, San Antonio came in and just started pouring their love for us. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. So these specials will run now through the end of August. For other ways you can best support best quality daughter and the Booza family, head over to KSAT.com. 38 students from Prairie View A&M University were taken to the hospital after showing signs of heat-related illnesses. This happened after their Panther Week activities Friday night. Houston officials say the students didn't show any symptoms until the end of the day. In a statement released from the university, it says in part, quote, several students reported symptoms of heat exhaustion. Emergency medical professionals were immediately dispatched to the scene to treat students for heat related illnesses. As a precaution, students are encouraged to monitor themselves. End quote. It's unknown how many students are still in the hospital as of today. Well, yesterday, the Bear County Sheriff's Office held a career fair hoping to attract new recruits. Now, the fair comes the same month as that historic pay raise for the department and the same month as a new program. So, BCSO. BCSO hopefuls got a leg up on their new careers with written tests and physical exams. Now, Sheriff Javier Salazar says there's a good turnout, but he's not surprised given the massive pay increase passed by commissioners back on August 1st. Incoming officers can now earn a starting salary $61,500, and if you start out in the jail, your starting salary will be $45,000. The change is needed given the roughly 250 opening spots. Young people are just not flocking to law enforcement uh, agencies' doors, knocking them down, trying to start their career. So we've got to be imaginative, but that's what we're doing here. This was also the first career fair since the launching of that Straight to the Streets program. That allows recruits who meet the age requirements to bypass time working in the county jail, and that way they can start working in patrol as long as they pass the tests. The Russian space agency says its Luna 25 spacecraft has crash landed on the moon after spinning into an uncontrolled orbit. So the spacecraft was scheduled to land on the south pole of the moon on Monday in a race with India's spacecraft expected to land the same day. The launch earlier this month was Russia's first since 1976 when it was part of the Soviet Union. In a state of emergency in Washington state where three major wildfires are burning, one person confirmed dead, more than 200 structures damaged or destroyed. Thousands of people had to be evacuated as well. ABC's Morgan Norwood has more on the efforts to get these fires under control. This morning, a trio of raging wildfires tearing through Washington state, killing at least one person and forcing thousands to evacuate. The gray fire burning west of Spokane, the most destructive, close to 200 structures destroyed. Flames swallowing this home on Granite Lake. This is what it looked like before. Now, only the frame remains. Firefighters from multiple agencies on the ground. Let's go ahead and upgrade this uh, to a second alarm. A flock of choppers fighting the flames from above, while farmers desperately dig their own fire lines as the inferno closes in. Oh, oh my God. This thick wall of smoke forcing I-90 to close for 20 miles. The gray fire scorching more than 9,500 acres, the Oregon Road fire burning 3,000, and the Winona fire ripping across 5,000 acres, all three zero percent contained. The devastation that happened in inside some of those areas, uh, I've, I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. Fire season in full swing out west. Overnight in California, a rapid inferno igniting, burning through more than 5,000 acres in Santa Barbara County. Feel the heat. Oh my God. 
God. Meanwhile, up north across the border, Canada still reeling from its worst ever wildfire season as the more than 1,000 out of control forest fires burn. Nearly 20,000 forced to evacuate Yellowknife Friday. And that was Morgan Nord reporting. The film Virtuosity, a reflection of art, a series that highlights local filmmakers in San Antonio happening next weekend, Saturday, August 26th at 2 p.m. Located at San Pedro Library is free to the public. The Saturday event will feature two local filmmakers showcasing their work. Those in attendance will be able to ask questions about their films. To learn more about this event, just head to ksat.com. Time now, 840, 81 degrees. Let's take a look outside with live cam. Already 81 by 840 on this Sunday morning. Hey, but Sarah Spivey says we have, there's still hope for a small chance of rain in a couple of days. She'll explain when that's happening when we come back. Their home and business sits on a tract of land approved by the city. Now one letter is leading to numerous citations. How did the city become aware of potential problems on a property with council approved zoning? Turns out that is quite a tale. KSAT investigates the criminal past of the disgraced former city official behind the letter and the developer who hired him. It's apparent to all of us what's going on. KSAT's investigation, including the developer's denial of involvement, is streaming now. Okay, so our producer just brought us ice cream that yeah. we're going to sample. The Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. And today is a good ice cream day, Sarah. Absolutely. It's been a good ice cream day for 22 days in a row <laughs> because we... Every today, day is ice cream day. we will make 22 100 degree days in a row, which will take a record for the longest streak. So mm -hmm. impressively hot. Take a look at the forecast for the day today. Temperatures starting off in the 70s right now, but as you look ahead, we're going to be at 86 at 10, 94 at noon, and we'll have sunny skies, 103 for the high temperature. Not a record, but definitely going to be hot. And then tonight, even after the sun sets, it's still going to be 96 degrees at 9 p.m. All right, here's a look at neighborhood highs. 105 in Del Rio, 105 in Creases Springs, 104 in Pleasanton, 104 in Canyon Lake, 102 in Kerrville, and 103 in Hondo. That heat high has nudged a little bit to the east, all because Hurricane Hillary is starting to move uh, on shore here in Baja, California, and it's bringing a lot of rain to California. Now, Hurricane Hillary is currently a Category 1 hurricane hurricane, but it is expected to weaken very quickly and impact Southern California as a tropical storm throughout the day today. Now, not really concerned about the winds from Hurricane Hillary, but the rain. Now, take a look at these rainfall totals. One to, uh, pardon me, three to six inches of rain across the desert with localized 10 plus. That's more rain than they see in a year in a matter of hours. So there will be flash flooding all throughout Southern California into Nevada today. Now, as we look to uh, the Gulf of Mexico and a tropical uh, wave that will impact us. There's a tropical wave that is uh, currently in Cuba and it has about a 50% chance of developing in the Gulf of Mexico in the next couple of days into a tropical depression or tropical storm. But regardless of development, it is going to bring rain to deep South Texas. Now, before you get too excited, the heaviest of the rain is going to be well south of San Antonio, but we will have a shot at rain, especially on Tuesday. Let me take you through the future cast. This is tomorrow morning. That wave will be in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, moving on shore sometime very early Tuesday in the pre dawn hours between Corpus Christi and Brownsville. Again, the area of low pressure is going to be too far south to bring very heavy rains to San Antonio. The areas with the heaviest rains will be from Corpus Christi to Laredo and the further south of San Antonio you are, the better chance of seeing rain you have. Okay, look at the future cast at 10 o'clock in the morning. This to me is a good uh, indication of the kind of rain we're going to see. Spotty showers and storms in San Antonio throughout the day Tuesday. We're talking about a few downpours in San Antonio throughout the day as that low moves off to the west in the afternoon. We might see one or two of those reach the hill country as well. The hill country, of course, the area where the drought is the worst. This is not going to be widespread rain for San Antonio or the hill country. However, from Eagle Pass to Catula, we could see some widespread rain. This is more along the lines of what we're going to get on Tuesday. Spotty showers, 
far between, but still a chance for rain, which, hey, I mean, that is a big change in the weather pattern. So when we look at rainfall, the least amount of rain is going to fall for San Antonio to Hondo to Bandera to Rock Springs to Kerrville and New Braunfels. There will be some more rain for areas from Eagle Pass to Pearsall to Catula to southern Atascosa County, with the most rain falling from Laredo to Corpus Christi, one to three inches of rain in that bullseye of an area in deep south Texas. About 40% coverage, 40% chance there will be those of us that miss out on the rain completely on Tuesday. That's just the nature of this weather pattern. But as we take a look at the uh, forecast through uh, Tuesday, at least our highs drop to below 100 degrees. I forgot to do this before the forecast, but today we have from Sunshine Cottage School for Deaf Children, Vanellope giving us some uh, tips on how to stay cool. Take it away, Vanellope. Hi guys, well today is very hot outside. Well, today you're going to be wearing shorts and and a shirt because it's very hot and drink a lot of water because it's hot. Way to okay. go, Vanellope. Vanellope is the cutest thing so ever. Cute. Also cutest name ever. I love so that name. Nice. She's adorable. Thank you so much to the kiddos at Sunshine Cottage for sending us videos Keep them the last coming. couple of days. Those are adorable. If you have a video of your kid you'd like to show during the weather, go for it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, Sarah. 849, 81 degrees. As we continue through these 100 degree temperatures of summer, tomorrow on GMSA, KSAT producer Haley Powers explains how the heat is actually impacting our power grid and what you can do to save money on your next bill. All righty, we got the pollen count in. Molds are low. They're the only allergen present. They are 90. As you take a look outside right now, 82 degrees already in San Antonio. Calm wind conditions, and it feels like 88. Looking at the forecast, 86 at 10, 94 at noon, 103 for the high. High fire danger all day long, so please be careful today. As you look at your forecasts, hey, there's something fun to talk about. Chance for rain on Tuesday with a high temperature in the upper 90s. Now it's important to note not everybody will see rain on Tuesday, but some folks will get some rain and temperatures will stay below 100 degrees for the first time this month. Guys, mm. we have got something fun that we're we talking about. We were listening to your forecast while swear. eating ice cream. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me about these. This is Sno um, Snoop Dogg's Dr. Bombay ice cream. Dr. Bombay ice cream. We each got different flavors. Mine is iced out orange cream. It is, is so good. I did not think this was going to be this good. Tropical sherbet swizzle. You would get sherbet. Cheers. And then uh, Max, Max, do you want to be included in this? I do. Hi. <laughs> he ate half of it in like. This is seconds. actually delicious. Cheers. Much Cheers. Cheers. Uh, so I got the rolling in the dough. It's cookie dough. And the cool part is it seems like half of it is basically just like lined with cookie dough. You see that? Show. Show. Like the, the entire like this quartile is just so full of So it's almost like a crust. It is. But then it also has chunks of cookie dough in here. Mm. I know. So I pulled up a website. It's fantastic. Free mind. Find your flavor. And oh we gosh. got... So there was actually a bit of contention on the group chat this morning of mm -hmm. what flavors we were going to go with. I yeah. was hoping that someone could go with, because on top of the ones that we got, I wanted someone to get bonus track brownie, because that sounded delicious. You know why I purposely didn't say brownie or cookie dough? Because why? you didn't want to help me? Well, because I knew that's what Max's going to want. Mm. So I'm like a sherbet Little now. sister, I never I wanted. <laughs> yeah, we could tell. What? How can you tell? <laughs> no, you what tell. does that There's mean? There's a certain kinds of people who like sherbet. You're just one of those so people. So I really wanted to go with brownie. Okay. I did. I like the s'more But for ones. dietary reasons, mm. I went for orange cream. There's apple. s'more vibes, which I love the name because you get to have so many different. Can I have like, s'more vibes. Yes, yeah, s'more vibes. I'm so confused. What's a sherbet gal? You're just a sherbet gal. <laughs> so no, no, it's just she's gonna be asking. But, so here's the problem. We had done a story with Bluebell a few weeks ago when they released their new flavor. Now we got to bring Bluebell on we here do. and see what compares because I'm pretty sure okay, this is like so a peanut butter. MJ got dough. these at HEB, right? Producer MJ, who's a hero. Thank you, MJ. Thank you. Hey, have a great day. I recommend. It's hot. Have some ice cream. Dr. 